In this lesson, we're going to have an introduction to the drilling cycles or the canned cycles. So, topics covered here. What is a canned cycle? What are the canned cycles? When do you use them? And how do you use them? So, what is a canned cycle? Well, canned cycles incorporate all of the motion you might do to complete a task. It's a process that can be executed with one command instead of programming a series of individual moves. Because when you drill a hole, if you were doing it manually, you would feed in, you would wrap it out. You would feed in, you would wrap it out. This cans all of that motion and puts it into a sequence that you can quickly call and reuse. So the G80 series of can cycles. The G80 series of can cycles are for all of the different hole machining functions. When you machine a hole, you perform a group of well-defined motions. Can cycles perform these repetitive motions with a simple set of codes. Once the can cycle is activated, it will repeat the drilling or boring or tapping cycle at every location that you specify. When you tell it the next XY location, it goes there and completes another cycle. This makes it easy to complete a group of holes with the same process. This process is canceled with the G80 command. So what are the G80 series CAN cycles? Well, you have a G81, which is basic drilling, center drilling, spot drilling. G82 is a counter boring cycle. G83 does peck drilling. G84 is a tapping cycle. G85 is boring and G86 is boring. You're probably wondering why there's two boring cycles. Well, there are some variations on how you bore a hole. And these can cycles take those variations into account. G87 depending on what control and what vintage and whose book you read could do a couple of different things. It could be a back boring cycle or it could be a chip breaking cycle. We're going to talk more about that later. G88 is a boring cycle and G89 is a boring cycle. G80 cycle parameters or words Learning the words used to program the G80 series of CAN cycles. Not all cycles use all of these words. Not every control uses the same cycles. Not every control uses the same words. The words you need depend on the cycle style. So this is the general format for a G80 series CAN cycle. So where you have the G8 underscore here is the CAN cycle. So that could be G81 through G89. XY is the location to drill or bore or tap. Z is the final depth. R is the starting height or retract plane. Q is the amount to drill per peck when you're using a peck drilling cycle. P is how long to dwell at the final depth when you're using a boring cycle and that could be G82, G88 or G89 because those boring cycles use a dwell time when they reach the final depth. And F is the feed rate. So starting with the XY location some controls require the XY location on the same line as the G80 CAN cycle. Most people will put the XY location on the line before the CAN cycle. This lets you pre-position to the location before the cycle is activated. It's like this. You'd make a rapid move to the XY position and a Z height of one inch above the part for clearance. 
Then we'd activate a G81 with our final Z depth of minus 1 inch, an R plane of 0.1, and a feed rate of 10. Instead of this, putting the X and Y and the final Z depth and the R plane all on one line. This is going to make a three axis move to that point and then start drilling right away. So it's a matter of preference, but most people will do the two line setup moving XY first and then running the CAN cycle. But most controls will work either way. The Z value is the final depth. This is the final position for the tip of the tool. It can be absolute or incremental depending on your current mode. The tool will feed to the Z depth. The R value is the starting height or retract plane. This is the Z height where it starts to feed from. This is the point where it returns to after reaching the final depth. And for peck drilling cycles, this is where it retracts to between pecks. R is the retract plane, or retract height. That's an easy way to remember it. The Q value is the peck amount. It's used for deep hole drilling. This tells the cycle how deep to go into the part before retracting to the R plane. After each retract, it rapids back to the last peck depth within a predefined clearance amount. So this pulls the chips out and lets the coolant get into the hole. That's why it's a deep hole drilling cycle. The p-value is how long to dwell at the final depth. It's used for counter boring and boring cycles. This tells the cycle how long to dwell at the final depth. The time is given in thousandths of a second. So P1000 equals one second of dwell time, and that is the standard for Fanuc controls. It does not use a decimal point. At least it doesn't in Fanuc controls. F is the value for the feed rate and it's used in all CAN cycles. The value depends on the current active mode. So if you're in G94, inches or millimeters per minute, or G95, it'll be inches or millimeters per revolution. Feed rates for tapping depend on the control. It could be the thread pitch, in this case 50 thousandths, point zero five zero, which would be 20 threads per inch, so you would take 1 divided by 20 threads per inch, which gives you 50 thousandths per revolution. G81 is your basic drilling cycle. So what does it do? Well, it rapids to the clearance height. It feeds to the final depth. And it retracts to the R-plane. It's used for spot and center drilling and drilling short or shallow holes or drilling light materials. What's the format for the G81? Well, you've got your G81, your XY hole location, your Z depth, your R plane, and a feed rate. So this will rapid to X, Y, and Z.1, the R plane. It'll feed at 10 inches per minute to a depth of minus 1 inch. And then rapid return to Z.1, the R plane. CAN cycles in action. When the CAN cycle is active, you only have to specify the next hole location. That's the beauty of the CAN cycle. You tell it what to do, and then you just keep telling it where to do it. So here we've specified the CAN cycle, and the next line we just tell it where the next hole is, and the next hole, 
and when we're done we use a G80 to cancel the can cycle. So each time it moves to the new location it will repeat the can cycle motion. G80 cancels the can cycle. G82, counterboring cycle. What does it do? Well, it rapids to the clearance height, the R plane. It feeds to the final depth. It dwells at that specified depth for whatever time you tell it, which is the P value. And then it does a rapid retract to the R plane. It's used for counterboring. The dwell smooths the bottom of the hole. What's the format for the G82? Well, you've got your G82, your XY position, your depth, your R plane, and the P value, the dwell time, and a feed rate. So it rapids to the XY and Z at the R plane. It feeds to a depth of minus 0.5. It dwells for 1.5 seconds. Remember, P1000 is 1 second, so a P of 1500 is 1 and a half seconds. And then does a rapid return to a Z of 0.1, the R plane. And that's the introduction to drilling cycles.